Here's the first steps on how you're going to reset the local Windows 8 password on your machine without having to send 20 bucks to Acer, wait 10 days for them to ship out a uh, restore CD so that you can blow your machine away and reload it. As, as my friend was telling me when she called Acer support, that's what they wanted to do. And she didn't have a problem with doing with blowing away what was on there because she has backups. But the biggest problem, even the 20 bucks wasn't bad for a recovery CD. Um, the problem is, with the $20, they won't give you a download link. They actually want to send you, in the mail, a CD. Um, which I guess, if you don't have any other computers, that might be the way to go. But this day and age, most people have access to be able to download, burn the CD, and go on their way. Now, if she had have gone that route, she would have lost everything on the, all her setup on the computer. This way here allows you to go in, resets the password of that user account, and you're in without losing any information whatsoever. So when people are getting their, their new machines, uh, of course, in the manuals and all these little quick specs, they say, okay, yeah, once you get into the machine, create a uh, password recovery CD. Well, there's not too many people who actually follow those steps and listen to that. So what happens is, what happens here? You get somebody locked out of their Windows 8 computer. In the past, Windows 7, Windows XP used to be pretty easy. You would go in make up a uh, Linux boot CD and there's a couple of them out there, there's a password reset one, you just basically it goes in, boots up, looks at the hard drive, digs through, finds the SAM, allows you to go in and blank out the administrator password. And then you can go in as the administrator with no password and then reset any user after that. It didn't give any other options to log in except for as her. What I ended up doing um, Actually, before, right now I have a switch user that was not there before. What I'm finding now is that um, when they actually install Windows 8, they're using a feature of the BIOS. F2 on this Acer gets me into uh, into the BIOS. Uh, so, like I was saying, when you get out into the BIOS now, you'll see under boot mode, UEFI. Now, this is a feature of the BIOS which ties the BIOS into the um, into the operating system and it's done for security reasons but what this also does is it stops you from booting off the old password cracking Linux CD or USB key because when you boot up off of that it cannot access the hard drive because uh, everything has to go through this UEFI. We're going to make a couple changes here, but I think I'll back up a little bit. So if you have one of the Windows 8 computers set boot mode as UEFI, you're going to find a different way of resetting the password. So for this, you're going to need another computer, Windows computer, it can be Windows 7 uh, or Windows 8, this obviously you have to be able to log into, you have to download some software. USB key, 2 gigs is, is a good start. You don't need any larger than that, but I wouldn't go with a 1. Some of these Linux distributions are not fitting on the 1. So a 2 gig USB key. And then we're going to download some software. Okay, so one of the first applications that I brought down was Linux Live, Lili, I guess call it, Linux Live USB Creator. I will put a link to this uh, in the comments down below. You go through, you download your Linux Lili, and this is going to allow you to create a boot USB key with a Linux distribution on it. Okay, so I already went through and I, I downloaded the, uh, the application from their website. Um, and what it'll do, it install. You have to go through the. Well, after you download it, you go through the install process, and you get this Linux Live USB Creator. Uh, a little hard to see with that background. 
let's bring it right let's put it right there okay so I've got the USB key in there you have to go I mean it's basic step one two three pop the key in there did a refresh now we choose the proper USB key so I know it's this one here 3.8 gig it's the G drive different options uh, when you're first going through you probably want you probably want to go into the download section because you want to download a, a distribution now one thing I found that worked well was the Cubone 2 13.04 rearing rigtail ringtail with KDE desktop um, after trying out some different I tried Linux Mint didn't allow me to boot up off of that to Acer I finally found this Cubuntu 13.04 so that's the one I chose and I went through and went through and autom automatically downloaded it that's gonna take some time so I'm gonna skip by that because I already have it downloaded so we'll use this option the ISO IMG zip and I have it right here we'll select the distribution okay and you as you go along you'll see this has gone down to a green light which means you're okay on this section step two we're going to a green light we're good there uh, I'll put just a meg um, and that basically just sets up a persistent spot on the USB key for storing files I'm not really going to use it so that's fine um, I created files on keys I didn't bother changing any of these options and then we just hit the lightning it's extracting the ISO file onto the key it says five or ten minutes so we'll come back when that's finished up we're only at 49 percent uh, we'll check in in a little bit the USB key has now been created we're all finished with this Windows 7 box I'm just gonna shut this down As you can see down here Linux live key is now up and ready so finished with this one thing to watch for you see this ease of access down the bottom here I'm just gonna click on it get you ease of access um, narrator magnifier all these type of things so that's what we're Make your computer easy. that's what we're looking to uh, use to help us here in order to get this to work I'm gonna restart we have to go into the BIOS and in order to get a CD or USB key booting off of this machine we have to find it's gonna be a little different in different machines so on this Acer on the Acer we want to go into the boot section and you see the boot mode here is set for UEFI. Um, we've got our boot priority as well. But what we want to do on this one, you hit enter. We want to go to Legacy BIOS. And what this is going to allow us to do is boot off of a CD-ROM or USB key. So the available boot devices will not change until reboot, which is fine. Um, nothing else in there. That's all we have to change in the BIOS. So we're going to exit. We're going to save that. And while it's booting, or when it comes up to boot, at the bottom there, I don't know if you saw, it was pretty quick, we had the F2 for BIOS, F12 for boot options. I'm going to choose, I hit the F12, I'm going to choose my USB disk. Move this around a little bit. Once you come up to this menu, you do not want to install Ubuntu on your hard drive. You just want to try it. And what this will do is it'll run off of the USB key. You can see down here, you can try it without making any changes. So we'll just try. Boot this up into a graphical interface. And as you can see on this Acer, the mouse works fine. We're going to go to computer. And we'll go to home, which is fine. We just want to get to the disk. On the side here, I don't know if you can see it. I'll drag this down a little. You can see your USB key and this one that says Acer is the actual hard drive inside your computer. There's a program called Utilman. We're going to go in and make some changes to that. So we want to go into Windows. Then we want to go into System32.
found this utilman.exe. First thing we want to do is rename it. All right. So we're going to rename it to .back. How's that? So utilman.exe.back. Next thing we want to find is the cmd.exe file. We want to make a copy of this. We want to copy it and paste it. Paste the one file. Now, this is where we want to rename it. So, utilman.exe. So, we're going to call it utilman.exe. We've already renamed the other one. We won't overwrite it. utilman.exe, continue. Copying's finished. Now, we should have down here. We have a utilman.exe and a utilman.exe.back. That's our original backup file. Inside of Linux, that's all we have to do at this point. So we're going to shut this down. Uh, actually, let's just do a restart. Because I'm going to go into the BIOS again. I'm going to go back in. I want to change this from Legacy BIOS back to the UEFI option, um, the secure mode. So what this will do is allow me to boot off of the Windows 8 hard drive in the install. We have to reboot once more.